this series, I'm telling you, this is the, this is the one series that he's gonna make a person say, "I want this thing or not." It sounds something like this: Do you want to be made whole? He ain't just going snatch and heal the man. He asked him first. I want to heal you against your will. That's called control, and I'm not that type. Heaven don't operate that way. So heaven will say, "Do you really want to be free?" Um, I I have no man to. I have no man. We start we start making all these excuses because we we want a welfare kingdom. Welcome each of you here to Fuel Station Church. We thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to connect with us. I'm in a room with some amazing Jesus disciples here in the city of Buffalo, New York. If you have not had a chance to like and subscribe, we do ask you to do so at this time. Uh, we just finished a series on uh, the steps to a transformational prayer life. And today we're going to begin a new series here at the church. And I pray that you can follow us with these series if you can't be with us here in Buffalo, New York. Um, today um, we're going to launch a new series entitled Breakthrough. Um, look at your neighbor and say, I'm ready for my breakthrough. If this series don't um, activate change in us, I don't know what else we could actually do, really, as as leaders or teachers of the word of God, because you're going to see very clearly. Um, and I, I believe the way God gave it to me in this introduction is going to help you to understand because you heard the term breakthrough before. But now you get to visually see it in your life. And that's a game changer. Um, I've had a series of breakthroughs throughout my Christian walk with the Lord. Um, it wasn't like one breakthrough and I never had to do any, any others. So uh, you're going to see that maybe in one area of your life, you could use a breakthrough. Then you may see in another area of your life, you already broke through. <laughs> so you may be like, you know, oh, I got my breakthrough. But after you hear today's teaching, you may see. Oh, in this area, I need some, I need some deliverance in this area. So, um, I pray again, open your spirit up. Please, please, please don't let the enemy distract you. Don't let the, don't let the enemy cause you to think about, uh, the Bills game tomorrow. Um, don't let him think, make you think about, um, your favorite food place after you leave here. Try to just give him a, a good, uh, got, give us a good couple of minutes just to really give you this download from heaven. We are going to be on the series. I don't know when this, how many episodes this will be, but I want to make sure before we close it that everyone here got an understanding of breakthrough. You, you know how to access it. You know how to pray for it and you know what area you need it in. Okay. So with that, I'm going to ask you um, to go with me to Exodus, the book of Exodus chapter 14. And I'm just going to use this as a reference to kickstart the series. I'm going to be taking you through many scriptures through the Bible. That's going to be talk. That's going to show you how the look, how the God that you serve do not want anyone in here in bondage. Who in here believe that? When he, you, I want you to think about this. Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins he died for us and part of the part of the package is deliverance freedom from from bondage if you read colossians that's the book of a month if you saw in chapter one it talks about how he has translated us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son so that means there's a couple of kingdoms we're talking about here that you can't see so there's two kingdoms taking place. And so when we got saved, he translated us by faith, because this is something you can't physically see. Physically, if you were, if you got saved in Buffalo, New York, and you are, and your body is still in Buffalo, New York, that physical body is still in Buffalo, New York, but your spirit man got translated between kingdoms. All right. I hope everybody understand that. So, but that takes place in faith because you don't see it in the tangible. But in the spirit, you are a new creature. Old things are passed away. And most times people look at the tangible and say, well, I'm not changed. The change is in your spirit. And it will then manifest in the places where you can see like your, your flesh. So some people struggle with if they made the transition because they're looking at this. Okay. So when he talks, when we talk about breakthrough here, you're going to, I'm going to show you real practically through this story that many of you have heard before. Uh, so let me read the scriptures and then I'm going to just walk you through it 
release you so you can go start getting the breakthroughs in your life. Okay. So Exodus chapter 14, let's read verses 13. I'm going to read verse 13 to 16. Then I'm going to go down to verse 21 and 22. So verse 13 says, and Moses said unto the people, fear ye not, stand ye still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see again no more. Verse 14, the Lord shall fight for you and ye shall hold your peace. Verse 15, and the Lord said unto Moses, wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. Verse 16, but they lift, but lift thou up thy rod and stretch out thy hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. Now let's go down to verse 21. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night and made the sea dry land and the waters were divided. Verse 22. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left hand. All right. So um, raise your hand if you are you familiar with the story. OK, good. That's most of us. All right. So. If I'm going to use this story to kind of visually show you the principles of breakthrough. OK. And because really what it is, is you're in a place of bondage. And you are trying to get to a place of freedom. All right. It's very simple. Right. So I wrote down a definition that um, and again, I don't know if this is what they say in Webster. I don't know what it is, but I after all my years and and understanding and all, all this. stuff, I said, I want to write down a definition that I can share with you. That's very simple. So this is the definition I came up with. Any barrier that finally opens up for one to receive deliverance. That's my personal uh, take on it. Any barrier barrier. That means something that's blocking that finally unblocks or opens up for one to receive freedom or deliverance. Okay, so that's my my version interpreting that. So now let me apply what I just said to the story we just read. So many of you know that the children of Israel was in bondage. There was slaves to the Egypt, to, to the Egyptians. And what happened was God was pre prepared to deliver them. They got excited because at one they were kind of happy that they were being delivered. They, you know, get some instructions to what to do for this for this deliverance. They actually do it. They pack their stuff. They begin to follow Moses out. But something takes place on the journey. They come to something called the Red Sea. Now, if any of y'all um, who is smart which all of y'all are, you know that when you go to a sea, you only got a couple options to get across. Somebody name one option. Swim or boat. So you see how simple that is, just two. There were a lot of people that got, that walked out of Egypt. That meant Every last one of them needed to know how to swim if they was going to make this trip. <laughs> That's, I'm talking about leaving the little kids. So you, can you imagine mothers thinking, I want to make it, but my little baby can't swim. And then none of them got no boats. So they are at a place, a barrier called this the Red Sea. But the Lord want to set them free and bring them to their own land. The Lord don't want them to be slaves no more. So he's trying to watch this, give them. He's trying to deliver them. But the, before the deliverance takes place, there is something that has to happen called breakthrough. Is this making sense? Because I'm, I'm trying to talk slow so everybody can understand because everybody now before they got to the Red Sea, were they the people of God? They were, they were the people of God before the barrier. They were chosen and they went out obeying God. They, they walked out going towards their deliverance, but something was in front of them that they could not pass. A struggle, an addiction, uh, 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 something that you brought from your past that just seemed like they ain't trying to go. It's like, I'm staying with you. 
<laughs> and you like, I'm saved, but this barrier is in my way from being at the place you want me to be. I pray this is helping. So they're looking at the Red Sea like, you told us to come this way, but I'm stuck. Did anybody ever said that in your prayer, Lord? <laughs> uh, uh, don't raise your hand. Don't. <laughs> you say, but you're stuck somewhere. I can tell y'all many times in my walk with the Lord, when I first gave my life to Jesus Christ, I was stuck. And so I was definitely walking in this new life, but I was stuck in a lot of things that I could not break until I understood the word breakthrough. Because there's a couple of things that takes place here. So watch this. Moses didn't, uh, God didn't tell Moses, lift up your rod. So when Moses lifts up his rod, the scripture says, the thing, the barrier opens up and provides them a path to get through it. That's important. But let's go back to the thing about swimming in the boat. When God delivered them, did he use their natural means? Because if he would, if they could have used the boat or swim, would that be considered a barrier? Ooh, y'all starting to get it. So when it comes to breakthrough, you need supernatural power to open up this thing. Mm -mm -mm. So that is why that this is I'm using this story because there is going to be some things in your life that you need God to break. And your swimming ain't going to do it. You would die trying to break it yourself. You would die trying to get free by yourself. So you need the Lord of the breakthrough to come and open up a, a way in this barrier to open up a way for you to be delivered. I pray this is making sense. So that is what breakthrough looks like. Now watch this. So they start complaining because now they're, they're God's chosen people, but they start complaining because they see this barrier. They hear about this freedom, but they see this barrier before the freedom happens. So now they are stuck and God tells Moses to lift up his rod and Moses had to do something. Everybody say do something. Moses had to do something by faith to activate the sea to open. Hmm. Now y'all can start seeing why sometimes we don't get our breakthrough because we want God to do everything first. Why didn't, uh, Jerome, tell me this. Why couldn't when they got to the Red Sea, the sea was already open? Why would he, yeah, that would, if that would have happened, that meant Moses, God did it all, right? So God led them to it and nothing was, and it was still blocking. God was just sitting there going, are y'all going to get involved in this, in this thing with me? Do you do it, Lord? Lift up your rod, Moses. No, if I lift up his rod, nothing going to happen. Lift up your rod and then I'll do my part. But no, Lord, no people will think become crazy sticking up a stick over this. Over. Lift up your rod. You, you show me that you trust me and I'll show you my power. So the problem we have, the reason why a lot of people don't got breakthroughs, because they go into church. God, you, if you want me free, you do it. Oh, if it was that easy, everybody who gets saved would not be having any bondages. <laughs> say that one more time. It takes person. So, so everybody say you got to want it. That's why people don't get free. That's why people is still the children of God, but still on the Egyptian side. Lord help us. This series, I'm telling you, this is this is the one series that he's gonna make a person say, "I want this thing or not." It sounds something like this: Do you want to be made whole? He ain't just go and snatch and heal the man. He asked him first. I don't want to heal you against your will. That's called control, and I'm not that type. Heaven don't operate that way. So heaven will say, do you really want to be free? Um, I, I have no man to, I have no man. They start, we start making all these excuses because we, we want a welfare kingdom. We want a kingdom where all we just do is sit back, give me my car, give me my, give me my husband, give me my wife, give me everything I want, and I'll praise you only when I feel like it. God is like, what kind of mess is this? Yes, you're saved. I love you. I died for you, but you're not experiencing freedom because you're too lazy to lift up your rod. <laughs> so when we were worshiping earlier, 
That's why I be saying things like, come on, y'all, let's clap. Because you have no idea. That's an act of faith. You are praising. You're clapping. And guess what? And sometimes in those atmospheres, God opens up doors for you because by faith, you are trusting in your Lord. And while you are here praising, he's opening Red Seas for you. <laughs> but we are we want to see the Red Sea open first, then we praise him. That's our problem. That's why a lot of stuff, we have 20 Red Seas in our life. We got a Red Sea over here, a Red Sea over here, but we, and we're saved at the same time. Isn't that something? And then we live defeated and say, well, this stuff don't work. It don't work because your faith ain't activated. So the thing that messed me up was I was saved all these years, Kita, and I'm talking about, man, God, I need to be free. You need to free me. You know, whom the son, I'm using all these, 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 uh, I'm using all these religious quotes. You know, whom the son said free is free and these, I'm free. I'm just speaking stuff, right? But I had no faith about it. I was just quoting stuff. And it wasn't until I understood what he did for me on the cross. When I understood that his, when he died on the cross, what his precious blood did his precious blood paid the price for my deliverance so basically all i got to do is get under the blood and the blood is what causes me to be protected so when so when it comes to breakthroughs you got to actually do something it doesn't just fall your red sea ain't opening until there's a rod being lifted who in here ready to lift some rods? <laughs> because I'm telling you, your red sea can be finances. Your red sea can be anger. Your red sea can be some um, bad emotions, some some generational curses, some family issues, some some uh, some. Um, for, you can have barriers in all kinds of ways and still be called a child of God and never see your promised land. Isn't that something? Saved and bound. Saved and stuck. <laughs> I think we should not. Should we call that the save and stuck? Okay, maybe. We, okay. <laughs> but that's the issue. So, so God told Moses, lift up your rod. Somebody tell me if Moses wouldn't have lifted up his rod, would the sea have opened? Now, does, did God want to still get the people through the sea though? So that meant God's heart and wanting to see the deliverer was there, but the act of faith could have stopped it. That's why the scripture says in Hebrews, without faith, it's impossible to please God because you're going to need faith. Faith is the thing that activate the sometimes with, with the things that we need God to release in our life. We need faith. We need to apply faith and know that, first of all, he can do something about this thing. I don't care. Listen, if you're here tonight and you got any addictions, anything you're struggling with, anything that you need to break through, I will put my life on it, that God's power can can get you through that easily. I can promise you that. The only thing is, do you believe he can do it? Because if you don't believe you can do it, if you think that thing is more powerful than God, according to your faith, be it unto you. That thing will always be bigger than God in your life. That's what changed me. I stopped saying, I can't get out of this. I, yeah, I, ca I can't get out. But guess who I know who could get me out? That was the game changer. So guess what I started doing, kid? Instead of me complaining about how big this the thing is and the struggles I went through, I started getting under my Lord and saying, let me just magnify my deliverer. So my faith is in the deliverer. So when Moses lifted up his rod, his faith wasn't in the rod. His faith was in the one who told him to lift it up. Do you understand? I pray this is good because he had to trust the voice of his God when he said lift it up. Because Moses was like, a rod? How can a rod get people through the sea? That's not your, that's not your job to figure that part out. Your job is to say, yes, Lord. Because <laughs> God has told many of us to do a lot of things. Some, some of y'all situations, God said things like shut off social media. That was your, that's you lifting up your rod. No, I can't shut off my social. Okay. Red Sea closed. All my other friends watch this. For you, <laughs> social media got you enslaved. Get off. Everybody else can watch it and be free, but not you. That ain't your strength. You get on there just to just to look at something, just to post something. Next, you know, 16 hours later, high anxiety and, and know everybody else's business. You start saying things like, man, this world is so such a bad place. Of course it is. 
because you spent 16 hours in other people's worlds. But for somebody else, that's not their issue. They're, they're not in bondage to that. So they can get on there and do what they got to do. And there's no pull. They're free. They can, but not you. Like I said, I know, I know there's just some things everybody else can do. I already know some areas that I had to get breakthroughs in in my life. So while everybody else is all free doing it, this brother's like, y'all go ahead. I'll see y'all. I'll see y'all tomorrow. I don't want to go back to bondage. I ain't as strong as you yet. You may be strong, but that area, I can't, you know, uh, you know, I like it's like it's funny. Like I said, I can tell y'all countless of things that I had to literally cut off just to keep my sanctification <laughs> and let people talk about you. Oh, you're like born It's born. But guess what? It's blessed. It's born and I'm a hero. Well done. I don't care. I don't need to do what everybody else is doing. I need to hear him say, well done. I want to stand before him and know that I have pleased him. And I don't want any red sea in my life not opening because of my disobedience. So in this story, they walk through. Now, let me just show you how breakthrough looked. I'm almost done. They start walking through the thing that was their obstacle. The, see, the, this is what I want you to understand about breakthrough. If you go over there now to the Middle East, the Red Sea is still there. So when you when God delivers you, he wants you to walk through it. He doesn't want to remove the Red Sea off the planet. He want to give you power to walk through it. Does that make sense? So, for example, let's just say your struggle was um, uh, let's just say you, you, you had a struggle with um, pornography or something like that. Let's just use that. Let's say that was your Red Sea. He he ain't go he ain't go um slash all the porn sites off the off the internet for you. <laughs> that ain't how he go do it. He go give you power to be able to to be able to still go online to check your email without going to those sites. So don't think deliverance means God remove you know remove every every poor video from the from the face of the earth. He don't deliver it away. He'll say no, no. The devil go do what he go do, but I'm gonna give you power to walk right through all the. So while you drive in and you going past all those stores and stuff that try to trigger you, you gonna be able to drive right past that same old store and not go back. You receive the breakthrough. Because guess what happened after they walked through? The seas closed back. So it was just to get you to the other side. But he he uses the, the barriers to show his power in your life. I can count about six barriers, six breakthroughs I needed. And I can tell you what my life looked like before the breakthrough and what it looked like after it. And I'm telling you right now, it is so much better on the other side. I, for every last area, I had a financial breakthrough in my life in about 2000 and about 2005, 2006. I was just, I just, I, yeah, I need, I had a serious financial breakthrough in my life. I, the way I viewed money, the way I saw it, the way I treated it, the way I, I, it was just like, I, I don't know. It, I just felt like I could never make money. It was just, I felt cursed. I don't know. I feel like nothing was working. And in 2005, I got a, I got a breakthrough. That breakthrough came in the form of not more money coming to me. The breakthrough came in the form of me not loving it so much. To the point that I was able to start, I was giving faithfully to the church. I became so, a, a faithful tither. I began to just start being a giver, start being real generous. I just got to get, cause I said, wait a minute, this thing has, has me in bondage. It's like I was too, no, no, I can't, no, I need to make more. And the more I kept chasing, the more it kept running from me. <laughs> I'm like, this don't make sense. So I got to the place where I just started applying biblical principles and I got a breakthrough. I started getting people doing, I, blessings started coming so fast. I'm like, oh my God. I don't see money the same way. I am not under bondage to money. That's called breakthrough. Guess what? Money is still there. The same money, the same amount of money that I got sometimes carry uh, or, or have with me, I remember having that same amount when I was a slave. And guess what? When I had that same amount when I was a slave, when it got in my hand, it was gone in two minutes. In foolishness. Just spinning it for dumb stuff. Just no... Now I got it, and guess what? 
sometimes if you stand, it, I, I don't touch it until I get some uh, good way that I can invest it or use it for some a great asset. So I'm using it for the right way because I am now mastering over it. That's called a breakthrough. So this is what I'm trying to say. I, I listen, man, yeah. In the area, guys, I just wanted to start this off by letting you know that you serve a God that wants you free. He wants you free. Don't listen to the lie that your life got to stay that way. Them, the children of Israel did not have to stay at the Red Sea looking looking over to the other side. Talking about, well, yeah, it would be nice to know what that experience is like. And most people, they believe your marriage got to be that way. Your finances got to be that way. Your, your mental health got to be that way. And your spiritual development just got to be this way for the rest of your life. There are some people who've been saved for 40 years and they have not grown an inch spiritually. They need a breakthrough. They need a serious breakthrough. There is something keeping them not even seeing. We serve such a big guy. You may tell me you got saved and you stayed in baby stage. You still asking for milk and you don't even enjoy meat of the word. If somebody give you the word, you like, oh, this is boring. Give me something. I need to. It's like we got a bunch of, 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 of kingdom babies who stay babies. We all enter as babies, but not to stay. If y'all see Dara in 10 years and she's still crawling, y'all come, y'all come and call, y'all, y'all come and, <laughs> y'all go, all y'all go be at our, me and my wife house saying something off. Y'all need help. <laughs> it's something, y'all feeding that girl or something, something wrong with that development. That's how it is spiritually. God don't want you to stay stuck. So at some point, you got to get to the place where you start to realize, wait a minute. Okay. This area right here, you know, when I came into the kingdom, I had about seven red seas in my life. You don't want to be saved for 40 years with the same seven red seas. That's not called growth. One of the assignments of the body of Christ in Ephesians, that's why God sends, he, he gives apostles, teachers, pastors, uh, prophets, and evangelists for the perfecting of the saints, for the edifying, for the building, so they can all, we can all grow, that we're grow, mature. So he brings gifts of, in the body so people can move from one level to the next. But in order to do that, they have to get breakthroughs. So a, a, a practical way of looking at a breakthrough is you were in the eighth grade and you passed and you got a breakthrough and went to high school. <laughs> All right, so there's a barrier you go have to have to overcome to get to high school, and if you pass it, you can get to the next level. If you can see it from that perspective, and the test is the Red Sea. The test is: Do your faith need to be your faith? Got to do something to shift you. So at some point, and when God is trying to set you free, when God is trying to to bring you to the next level, He's going to prompt you. You're gonna feel a level of of uh, um, not condemnation, but you're gonna start feeling some conviction about certain things. Some things he'll start challenging you about I like say listen you've been here long enough you've been having that attitude issue long enough you have been you have been struggling financially long enough you have been mean long enough you need to go to Lexo let me heal you in that area no Lord I, I'm just okay stay another lap at the Red Sea don't don't even don't don't cross it you there is an option you're more than welcome to pass. I'll open the seat for you to let you get your breakthrough, but you got to want it. And most people say they want it, but when it's time to do the faith work, I ain't lifting up my rod to get that. Mm -mm. I would not lift up my rod because lifting my rod, I would look stupid. That's why I tell people, true disciples, you don't care what people say about you. You don't care what whatever you know you need to do to please your Lord. You're doing it. You're not trying to fit in no more. Cause, but that's only for people who are serious about breakthroughs. And believe you me, Christians, believers, whatever you want to call it, need breakthroughs. So in this series, we're going to, I just wanted to kind of paint the picture for you. A breakthrough is any barrier that finally opens up for one to receive deliverance. So if you are stuck in any area of your life, the number one advice I'm going to give you in, the, in this introduction, in, in introduction is that your Lord do not absolutely want you to stay stuck in this barrier. It's almost like, you know what, it, it, I, can, I can't, I'm not God, so I can't imagine 
I'm, I'm not even going to try to put in, in words how he feels. But what I would say is I can imagine if I had a blessing for somebody. I had a blessing for you. And I said to you, I have a brand new uh, house I want to give you. But you're going to have to drive 400 miles to come get it. The house is already paid. It's exactly what you want. Um, it's something I want to do for you because I care. And then I say to the person, do you really want this house? Of course, everybody's going to say, yeah. Oh, my God. I'm now, watch this. But you got to drive 400 miles or to come get it. And the person started giving me all these excuses why they can't get to my house. You know how that would hurt me? Knowing that the house is already purchased. <laughs> and all I need them to do is a little effort, which is get here. In a per I don't got no, I don't have this. I don't have this. I don't have, I need this. I need it. So guess what I have to do on my end? I got to wait to release to you what is already yours. Do you know how many people right now in this room or watching, you got stuff heaven is trying to release to you that's already yours, but there's no faith activation. We want to stay stuck. We want to stay in our wimpy state. Oh, I just need somebody to help me. At some point, God will say, look at that rod, stop crying. At some point, he, go, he, he your God would say that to you. Because, you know, the, the, the church of today, we like to babysit people. The church has become a babysitting shop. Thank God you guys are like that. I just want to thank y'all. Y'all are the best. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. I'm talking about, you go to a place that people want you to do everything for them. With no effort on their part. I'm like, what kind of what kind of system? That is not in the Bible. And then we get mad at that place, at that pastor, at that church, for not doing what they're supposed to do. That part blows my mind. Because they don't know how God operates. And they don't understand how breakthrough is. So if that person really want a breakthrough, if people really want a breakthrough, guess what they go going to do? They're going to have to activate their faith in some way. Some supernatural things you would never see. You should be told a lot of supernatural things. You would never see the deepness of God, the things that God really want to do. The opening up a rare season. Everybody want to see a miracle, but everybody don't want to do the thing to get the miracle. So he tells a man in the Old Testament by the name of Naaman, through the, through the prophet, it says, go, go dip in the Jordan seven times. And, and the man wanted the healing, but he didn't want the dip. <laughs> That's just like us, right? God heal me. Okay, go dip in the Jordan seven times. Nah, nah, nah. I was hoping you could just speak something over me. You see, you see the mindset we go through? We want God's blessings, but we don't want the faith activation. That's why people are stuck, don't have breakthroughs. This, this, through this series, I really believe when I when God was putting this on my heart to share that this was the next thing, I saw people getting set free from demonic oppression. I saw people getting all type of things broken off their life because they're finally gonna say, I don't want this in my life no more. I don't want the generational, who in here want, who in here, raise your hand if you want that generational curse to, to keep following you? Nobody, right? So watch this. So you're, so God's going to say to you, okay, you're going to have to do something different than what your family used to do. Uh-oh. But, but that's how we do something different. But, but we, we all do something different. You belong to me now. That's what, this is how God. So, so he told, so it sounds something like this, Abraham, um, uh, leave your father's house. I'm going to show you a land that I have for you because what I'm about to do in your life, your, your father is idol worshipers. I don't want you to fall under that. Tara was an idol worshiper, his, his, I, Abraham's father. And, and God called Abraham out of that idol worshiping family because back then, whatever the dad does, that's what the son does. So what he was doing was he was giving him a early way to get a breakthrough. And Abraham had a choice. Abraham could say, I ain't going nowhere. I'm too loyal to my dad. According to your faith, stay right there, Mr. Abraham. And Abraham would have been an idol worshiper. We never would have been talking about the man of faith today. 
So there's going to be some things that you're going to have to do. My prayer for you is that I hope that you are ready to do so. Let's bow our heads at this time. Father, we thank you so much, Father, for your goodness and your mercy. Lord God, I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that you will help us to make it through, Lord God, and give you the opportunity to finally activate our faith and trust you. Lord God, in the areas of breakthrough in our life. Father, many of us, we have areas in our life, God, that we are, we're, we're fighting and we're stuck. Lord, I pray today, God, that we will activate and lift up our rod, lift up our praise, lift up our worship, lift up our attitude towards you. Father, that we will completely, Lord God, give you the yes that you have been calling for us, Father. And Father, I be we believe that you will open up the red seas in our life. The things that has over us, that over our lives that's trying to keep us held in bondage. Lord God, we know that you are bigger than those things, God. So today we release all of our, uh, all of the barriers in our life to you and father we want to say whatever you tell us to do lord god whatever way that we must lift up our rod for you to activate your um your power in our life god we are willing to be obedient to your will father we love you and praise you in jesus name we pray amen and if you are watching this and if you don't know who jesus christ is i am here to encourage you that you can have a major breakthrough in your life today you can be a new creature as the word of god says if um, jesus christ loved you so much he died for your sins so all you have to do at the faith action is to accept him into your life and you can be entered into the kingdom of this dear son so if this is you i'm going to ask you to please repeat after me please say lord jesus come into my heart i ask you today that you will forgive me of all my sins i repent of all my sins and today I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that you are the son of the living God. Change me, make me new. And as of today, I want to be one of your disciples in Jesus name. Amen. Listen, if there is you, the angels in heaven are rejoicing. We are rejoicing here at Fuel Station Church. We thank you so much for taking the time out of your schedule to be able to, to connect with us. And until next week, we're going to go deeper into this breakthrough series and ask God to give you the breakthrough that you need in your life. In Jesus' name, we'll see you next week. God bless you. All right, guys, let's give God a hand raise.